Hi, everybody. Sean Woodland inside the CrossFit <laughs> Update Studios, joined by a man who's been to the CrossFit Games three times. He finished seventh in 2016. He is Jacob Hepner. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Unfortunately, you had to withdraw from the Open because you have some bursitis in your knee, yet you are still working out. Why did you think that, you know what, this is not an injury worth fighting through? Yeah, so um, in the past, I've tried to work through injuries. In high school, I had a complete ACL um, mm -hmm. tear. Played the whole season without an ACL and half my meniscus, and, and it was awesome, and I had a good time. But, like, looking back, there's some things that still linger from that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I tried. I, I think I hit my knee, and it swelled up about two weeks before the Open. So mm -hmm. there was some time. I, at first, I thought, okay, a couple days, um, it's going to go away, so it's going to yeah. drop. It didn't. Um, leading up to the Open, the first workout had burpee box jumps. Um, I could have done the burpee box jumps. It was just really painful. Yeah. And I thought to myself, looking back at, at past data from Opens in the past, Castro, we squat almost four out of five weeks mm -hmm. or do some form of squatting, whether it's heavy or wall balls or whatever. I decided, you know what? I might be able to do 17.1. It's not going to be stellar by mm -hmm. anyone's means. Um, but then I'm thinking, okay, we're going to do something later with yeah. my knee. So I decided to pull out then and obviously we lunge next week. Right. I was incapable of lunging. So to me that felt better yeah. that I had pulled out and then especially felt better when we snatched. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I was healthy, it probably didn't be real hard. So. You're a guy that people know who does a ton of volume. So how did the whole knee issue <laughs> affect your training? Yeah, so right now, um, I'm with brute strength right now for training. Um, and I have a 365 year off season, which is unheard of. I've not <laughs> done this before in so long. So it's gonna be awesome. For me, it's, it's time spent on <clears throat> less volume and working on my weaknesses. What are my weaknesses? Uh, heavy barbell heavy deadlift, anything that we're heavy in front of it. Yeah. So we're spending a lot of time um, trying to, you know, not work on my engine so much. It doesn't need to be happen, but mm -hmm. working on things I'm not good at, heavy barbell movements, so. You've been to the games three times and each year you've gotten better. Last year you finished seventh. What's it gonna take now for you to make that next leap and get yourself on the podium? Yeah, so, I mean, if we, again, if we look back at past data or ask anybody in this in this realm of the sport, what is Jacob Heppner not good at? They're gonna give you the same answer. Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna say he's not good at heavy lifts, so. What'll get me up there is improving at barbell lifts and being able to move um, my 80% well and improve my one rep maxes. You once, a lot of people might not know this, organized a, a bone marrow drive for your sister who was undergoing treatment for leukemia, who is now doing fine. But going through that, what's it like seeing a family member be affected by that disease? Yeah, so it really puts in perspective what you do in life, right? Mm -hmm. You think, uh, you hear about cancer, and cancer has probably affected many of my family members and probably many of mm -hmm. yours and many, many of your friends. But you tend to think of cancer as something that only affects people who are or older right. or middle-aged, right? Mm -hmm. And so seeing it, and my sister, who at the time was, my mom's gonna be mad because I'm probably gonna give the wrong age. I think she was four at mm -hmm. the time. And um, seeing a four-year-old trying to explain to her that she's in a life and death situation fighting for her life is, is very emotional. Yeah. And um, you appreciate what you have at mm -hmm. the time, not taking anything for granted, yeah. right? Because, I mean, she's four years old. She doesn't even know what's going on, and now right. she's fighting for her life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know. Let's talk about something now a little more fun. You and I both share a deep affinity <laughs> for Star Wars. <laughs> if you could be any character in that universe, who would you be and why? Well, I mean, you could sit here and you could pick a well-known character. You right? could. You'd be like, oh, mm -hmm. Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, no, I wouldn't pick it. Yeah, no, of <laughs> course not, no. But... And then everyone's like, oh, I know, I know Anakin, but you mm -hmm. can pick a character people don't know, mm -hmm. right? So they recently came out with a new book yes. that I'm reading right now. My wife hasn't seen the charge in her account for what I paid okay. for it for $14, mm -hmm. but it's a book about Thrawn. I want to hug you right now because that's uh, seriously one of my favorite yeah. characters oh, ever. Oh, he's the best, yeah. Why, why, are you, why are you so... He, well, he's not a Jedi. Why you for him? Right, he's mm -hmm. not a Jedi. He's a normal bro. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Super tactical. That's the mm -hmm. best part. Mm -hmm. He's just a tactician. He's just smart, bro. Okay. It's like your equivalent of Sherlock Holmes, who's in the Star Wars universe. I love it. Yeah. That's you just got up yeah. many notches. I yours? thought you could. I'd be Boba Fett. Really? Yeah. I'm See, a that's kind of like. I know. I mean, I know that's a safe one right down yeah. the fairway, but I've always been a fan. I think he's he's still my ba my best, my favorite character. Okay. So yeah, he's my guy. Okay. Next question. Um, oh, now this. Okay, this is a Hepner interview. Now here we go. There it goes. Okay. Do you think? Did he survive the Sarlacc? Yes. In fact, George Lucas is on record as saying that he is neither alive nor dead. And in some of the, ex the books that have come out now, they are making references to his armor at least still being around but being worn by somebody else. So I think there's a good chance that he got out. He's waiting to come back. And I have a theory okay. that you're going to see him in, in, in not, maybe not the next one, but in one of them. 
Well, think I think they're up? making a standalone, right? And they were trying to see if Rogue One did well, if mm -hmm. the standalone's gonna do well. And it did well, this I think. This has gone it was, off it the rails. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I think they're gonna do a Boba Fett one. I hope they do. And down, and I will be the first person in line. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Have my underoos on and the yeah. whole nine yards. Yeah. Jacob, best of luck, man. I hope you're, you know, you get healthy and we hope to see you back at the games, you know, Appreciate in 2018. Jacob Hepner, three-time CrossFit Games athlete, super mega nerd and Grand Admiral Thrawn enthusiast. <laughs> Thanks.